Welcome back. Thanks so much for staying with us here on Daytime Update. Let's bring you this discussion now. The High Court has ordered the City of Johannesburg to resolve a municipal service dispute bill with a homeowner in Ilovo. The matter has been ongoing for over seven years. The court now says the city must stop disconnecting or terminating the basic services to the homeowner. Joining us is Angela Rivers. She is uh, the general manager at the Johannesburg Property Owners and Managers Association. Angela, uh, this sounds so familiar, all of this um, that I've just mentioned in the introduction to our story. Um, disconnection notices, if you haven't paid at least a day after your bill has, has been sent out. What an incredible, uh, an incredibly difficult thing it is to be a homeowner in Johannesburg and to get an accurate reading for what you actually owe the city. Absolutely. This is definitely not a, a new situation in the city. It has been going on for many years. Um, just within our JPOMA membership, we have uh, at least half of our members have court interdicts or court orders against the city compelling them to fix their billing. And these court orders just continuously go ignored and pushed aside. So, so you were telling me when we were chatting off air that um, you, you actually know of several cases that are before the court or in the process of going to court? So we actually have court orders. So the judge has ordered the city to fix their billing and they're not allowed to disconnect the properties until the billing has been disconnected. Um, a huge part of my job, which is not really why I was employed, but what I do majority of the time at the moment, is stopping the disconnections from happening when we have legal um, courts orders in place. Um, just this morning I was working on a building where um, we have a property that's with the ombudsman. Uh, the ombudsman is trying to, encourage, well, trying to enforce the city to fix the billing. We had Joburg Water this morning there trying to disconnect, and then City Power came in directly afterwards and disconnected the power. Um, so now, even though they're not allowed to disconnect it because it is sitting with the ombudsman, um, it's going to take us 72 hours to now reconnect um, electricity to a building that has 600 families in it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and, and there are stories like that of um, private uh, homeowners as well, right, um, who are Absolutely. disconnected just at the drop of a hat, which is bizarre because there are so many other issues that City Power and Joburg Water have to attend to. It really is bizarre that they have the time to go and disconnect a customer, in many cases, um, hasn't actually defaulted, but they're just trying to sort out uh, their bill and get the right amounts. Absolutely. And, you know, the, city ha the city's bylaws are very specific. You, they are not allowed to disconnect if you have an open query on your account and you are continuously paying every month, every month what you think is the correct. So say one month you suddenly get a 30,000 rand water bill and you've always been build 15. If you continue to pay that 15 and you log a reference number and you have an open reference call, they are not allowed to disconnect. They are actually continuously acting against their own bylaws. Okay, so that, that's um, an important bit of information for our viewers, uh, at least those of, the, uh, those of them who live um, and own properties uh, in Johannesburg. So mm. if, uh, if um, my, my question has suddenly left my mind. But, for example, you know, in the context of load shedding, um, where we've faced power cuts for, for many hours of the day, in the context of many houses now being solar powered, uh, people have boreholes on their properties, and they're still confused about the fact that their water and electricity bills are so incredibly high. If that is someone that's listening to our, to our discussion, what would you recommend they do? So it's important to note that if you do have a borehole, you do need to register it with, the, with Joburg Water. If you don't, when they see your water meter is now um, not reading water, they will either think it's a faulty meter or they'll charge you estimates. So that's the most important thing with boreholes, at which isn't public knowledge. You get a borehole certificate and you register your borehole with, the, with um, Joburg Water. With regard to um, the city power, it's the same kind of thing. The city has a record of the fact that every month you use 400 units and suddenly you're using 50 units. They either think it's a faulty meter and they will start billing you on estimates. Hmm. So you need to let the city know by logging a call that you have now moved over to um, solar, you've moved over to a borehole, just so that they can understand why there is a drop of usage within your property. Sure. That's incredibly important to know. Um, you know, when, when we think about lodging these kinds of disputes, and in the case that we, uh, we are talking about now, this homeowner treated as a delinquent consumer's 
obstacles put in her path as she sought to be uh, accurately billed. Um, she, she fought this case for seven years. Uh, it's been an ongoing matter for over seven years. Um, and, you know, with people's busy lives and, and everything that's, that's happening in our country, it's often difficult for, for you to even go and, and, and lodge a complaint, right, with Johannesburg Water um, or with City Power at, at the City of Joburg's uh, offices, never mind spend, um, never mind the time spent in court, but also the money spent in court pursuing a case like this. Absolutely. I mean, a court, a court option is not uh, something that's easily available to the regular guy on the street. And the city over the years has tried different mechanisms to help people to log calls. For example, there's certain email addresses for different regions. They've got the online portal. But what we have discovered over the years is that while they have all these great ideas, there, aren't, there isn't actually any manpower on the, on the other side um, checking these emails and allocating the calls to the different departments. And I mean, anybody who's tried to phone the, the call center, the 011-375-5555, it's, you can sit on the phone for, for the day. up to an hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, so it, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so what should we be doing as um, homeowners in Johannesburg? Should we be taking our own readings of uh, water and electricity usage um, every month, comparing that to the bill that you're getting, and then lodge a dispute if indeed there is a discrepancy? Absolutely. I mean, we as residents should be interrogating our bills every single yeah. month. Um, Definitely taking our own meter readings. Um, I know that the city has started, I think Joburg Water has an app where you can um, submit your own water meter readings. I haven't tried it personally myself because fortunately I'm down the road from Joburg Water, so we get read quite frequently. <laughs> but I know that there are mechanisms to um, log your own meter readings. Definitely do that. Um, and one thing that you should always look at is there's, they will always try and add little extra charges and do, you know, the, the bills, I think, sometimes are almost deliberately complicated. Mm. Um, and I think that that was one of the things that, was, that um, was brought up in the article that went out with this court case, is the fact that, you know, these, these, are, these invoices are almost nonsensical. And if you do log a query, suddenly you've got a rebill and you've got all these things that you don't understand. Um, really, I think it's important and um, I think it's something that we should as residents really educate ourselves um, on these accounts, how to log calls. And the Joburg website is a little bit, it's a bit complicated to navigate, but once you know where everything is, there are, it's, there's some powerful tools on there. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, the bottom line is you need to be interrogating um, just exactly what you are being billed for every month. Just as a, as a final comment, Angela, um, it also just goes back to the problem around um, Joburg billing, right? And this is a story that <laughs> I've been covering for, for some time, um, I would say for over, for over 20 years, sitting at the city of Joburg's offices trying to figure out just uh, when this billing system is going to get in order. What's your reading of that situation insofar as billing is concerned? So, you know, the, for me, the billing situation is very, it's, it's complicated. When, when the decision was made to separate all the entities, at one stage, you had billing, job of water, city power, refuse, everybody in the same building working together. One of the mayors along the line decided to separate all the entities. So now what you have is you have a situation where billing, the billing department cannot just change your bill because you say so. They need to get the directive from Joburg Water. So you'll log your call with Joburg Water and say, my meter is incorrect. They then need to send that information to the billing department, and the billing department then can fix the bill. So there's a huge disconnect between the entities and the billing department. There's also a lot of animosity between the two um, departments. Um, I, I'm always fighting with either one of the entities, Job of Water or City Power, to just send the job card to billing, send the information to billing. We've got people at billing who want to fix the accounts, yeah. but are not empowered to do that until they get the directive from the utilities. So at what stage can a property owner in Johannesburg get in touch with you? So <laughs> you would have to be a, a, a member of our association. Um, I, I am always, you know, if someone wanted to pop me an email and ask me to look at their accounts, I'm happy to give you quick advice. But for any deep advice and all that, my board has made it very clear that um, you would have to be a member, which our membership is quite affordable. So, I mean, we've tried to keep it as inclusive as possible. 
Um, so to give you an example, if you owned one flat in the inner city, it would cost you 55 rand a year to become a member. So, you know, it, it is affordable and it is important to be part of a collective. Yeah. That is something J. Palmer has been in existence for 20 years. We were created at the um, request of council um, because council was tired of dealing with a whole bunch of different developers and property owners and they wanted to deal with the collective. Mm. So my job really is to deal with council and to fight on behalf of my membership base. And, and would that be ordinary property owners as well that can be a member? So anybody who has a property and gets a City of Johannesburg account can become a member of J. Poma. I think I may have opened a major can of worms here and you might have a <laughs> whole so. range of other customers knocking at your door very shortly. Uh, you might want That's to get fine. some more stuff. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Rivers, let me thank you for your time. She is the General Manager at the Johannesburg Property Owners and Managers Association. And there you have it. If indeed you want to become a member of the association, get their help with your rates bill. Um, it costs about 55 rand a year. I